Hi everyone, today we're going to learn how to remove background in GIMP. For those who don't know what GIMP is, GIMP is an open source software which is pretty similar to Photoshop. And today we're going to look at different tools that we can use to remove background in GIMP. So let's get started. First tool is the easiest and most popular one, the fuzzy select tool. It is pretty much the same as magic wand tool in Photoshop. Open your image and select the tool. You can change its size and hardness from the toolbar. Click on the background to select it and hit delete on the keyboard. That's it. You have removed the background. The next tool is for much more advanced users, the free select tool. It needs a good grip on the mouse as this tool lets you draw the boundary of the image. Select the tool and start tracing. This is a little time consuming so be patient. You can zoom in to get more fine details. After tracing, go to select and invert your selection. Now press delete on keyboard to remove the background. It takes some time and effort to get it right. Now let's take a look at quick mask. It's not exactly a tool, it's rather a process. To start, press shift Q on your keyboard or go to select and click on toggle quick mask. As soon as you click it, your image will turn red. The process uses pixel changing tools such as paintbrush or eraser. Select the eraser and start erasing the image. You can increase or decrease the size of your eraser and zoom in to get all the details. Once you're done, go to select and click on toggle quick mask again to turn it off. The portion you erased will turn into a selection. Go to select and click on invert. Now hit delete on keyboard to remove the background. That's it. It is pretty simple, but it takes a little practice. The next method that we're going to look at is for the advanced users. Layer mask lets you preserve all fine details in the image, but this process will work only if there is a significant difference in the contrast of image and background. Open the image and create a duplicate layer. We will make three layers because the third can come in handy when fixing final image in the end. Select the first layer from the layer panel. The first step is to increase the saturation on the image. Go to color and hue saturation. Take the saturation and value to the max. This is necessary to increase the difference between the image and the background. To make sure your background is completely white, go to colors and levels. With the white dropper, click on the darkest portion of the background. This will make it uniformly white. If you're sure that your background and your foreground look visibly different, you can proceed to the next step. Or you can increase the saturation of the image again. Go to the colors and desaturate. Choose luminous as a mode and click OK. Remember, we're doing all of this on the topmost layer. Again, open the levels toolbox, increase the input levels to the max until the image turns completely black. Don't worry, this is exactly what we want. With the top most layer still selected, go to edit and click on the copy visible option. Now select the second layer in layer panel. Right click on it and find the option that says add layer mask. Select the option that says white full opacity and click add. You can turn the visibility off for other two layers. Okay, we are now working on the second layer. Go to the edit and click on paste. This will turn your page grayish. It will create a floating selection. Click on the anchor icon, go to select and click on invert. As soon as you do this, your image will become visible. You might notice the background peeking through the lighter portions of the image. Don't worry, you can easily fix that. From the tool, select brush. Change the foreground color to be white. Start brushing over the image. It will make the background disappear. At this stage, you can use the third layer as the reference. This is a very time consuming method and it is only suitable for images with white background. It might not work with all the images. The last tool that we're going to look is Paths tool. Paths tool in GIMP is pretty similar to the pen tool in Photoshop. Select it and start adding anchor points to your image. You need to trace the boundary of the image. You can curve the path to fit your image. After tracing the path, convert the path into selection by right-clicking anywhere on the path. Click on select and then from path. After converting the path into a selection, invert it to select the background. Now hit delete on keyboard to remove the background. GIMP is a great software for beginners but you need to keep practicing to become pro at it. That's it for today.